Okay, so I want to go ahead and complete this table of uh, some of the continuous functions that we have in time and write the corresponding uh, Laplace transforms. Um, so <clears throat> I just need to find the Laplace transform of the cosine of alpha t. Um, and the sine of the cosine are very important functions because they, they, they make great driving functions in mechanical and electrical uh, systems. They always uh, give you these oscillating functions. Um, so your spring mass, uh, your spring mass dash pot, um, the LRC circuit, um, you know, they can all be driven by sines and cosines, like the, the, the AC uh, power source uh, would be uh, sines and cosines. So anyway, let's, uh, let's take a look at this. So if I were to integrate this, I mean, I could kind of go through the same argument that I did for the sine of alpha t. Um, but for this, let me just apply a neat little trick. Um, I'm going to take a little excursion here and then let's find the Laplace transform of the derivative of some function. So let's see, and this is because I know uh, the Laplace transform of the sine, maybe I could use that when evaluating the Laplace transform of the cosine. So I write this as e to the minus st times f prime of t dt. So um, as is typical with all these Laplace transforms, we're going to use integration by parts. Um, and in this case, let's let u equal to e to the minus st, where our du is going to be a minus se to the minus st dt. And with dv, I'll pick up the f prime of t dt such that v reduces it to f of t. So now let's write this transform as u times v. So I'll get f of t e to the minus st evaluated from 0 to infinity minus the integral from 0 to infinity of uh, v du. So I get this function f of t and then du. So I have this minus s. Um, so I have minus s e to the minus st um, times my function f of t and then dt. Okay, so I could pull the minus s out, um, so let's kind of do it. Uh, and then let's evaluate this using the evaluation theorem. So at infinity, um, I guess the assumption here is that any continuous function in time um, over long times t will be driven to zero uh, due to this decaying exponential. Um, and if I evaluate this guy at zero, I get minus f evaluated at zero times e to the zero, which is just one. Minus and minus becomes a plus s times the integral from zero to infinity of e to the minus st times your function in time dt. So this is the relationship that I saw, that the Laplace transform of the derivative of some function I'm just using this because I know the sine and cosine are so intimately linked. Um, it's going to be s times the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the minus st f of t dt minus the function evaluated at 0. But this is just the Laplace transform of some function f of t. So I could write this as s times the Laplace transform of some function f of t minus that function evaluated at zero. So let's use that to find the Laplace transform of the cosine of alpha t above. And again, we very well could have gone through and done two integration by parts and found the answer just like we did with the sine. But this is a neat little trick. Um, so we're going to get s times the Laplace transform uh, our function f of t, so if f prime, I guess I'll do a sidebar, if f prime is equal to the cosine of alpha t, remember f prime should be uh, the derivative of f with respect to t, then my function f of t, if I multiply both sides by dt and integrate, um, I should get the integral of the cosine of alpha t, and the integral of the cosine maps back to the sine of alpha t, and then there's a factor of 1 over alpha. So I get 1 over alpha times the sine of alpha t. 
So I have S. And so this is my function. I'm going to have the Laplace transform of 1 over alpha sine alpha t minus my function evaluated at 0. And that's really easy. So let's take alpha t and let's evaluate at 0. So I get 1 over alpha, of course, sine 0 gives me 0. So this thing vanishes. So the Laplace transform of the cosine of alpha t is going to equal to, and uh, the Laplace transform is a linear operator. So I can pull this 1 over alpha out and I'll get s over alpha. Uh, I mean, it, it really is just an integral. Since the integral is linear, um, then this Laplace transform is also going to be linear. Um, and, and we can prove it uh, times the Laplace transform of the sine of alpha t, which we know, so we have that here on this table. So this becomes s over alpha times, and so here I have alpha over alpha squared plus s squared, which when alpha divides by itself gives me 1, leaves me with s over alpha squared plus s squared. So now the Laplace transform the cosine of alpha t instead of alpha over alpha squared plus s squared like the sine, I get s over s squared plus alpha squared or alpha squared plus s squared, either way.